Hello and welcome to the Story Forge. I'm your host, Grant Ellis, and this week we're going to talk about technology and its impacts on your campaign settings, specifically transportation. When considering transportation technologies, our minds might instantly jump to planes, trains, and automobiles, followed by fantastical possibilities, such as flying carpets, living nautiloids, and elemental-powered airships. I'd like us to simplify this by thinking about the most basic and simple invention, the shoe. The invention of foot covering allowed ancient peoples to traverse more difficult terrain and for longer periods. The advent of skis and snowshoes let people travel faster and longer over frozen terrain. Bridges shortened the amount of time it would take to cross potentially dangerous bodies of water. Other technologies allow for heavier loads to be carried further distances. As we examine the ability to travel over land, sea, air, space, and between planes, we should consider the consequences for each decision. What does this look like in our game and in our world? Let's compare some examples. In the Arthurian campaign Pendragon, let's consider a knight who's preparing to go to tournament. Consider a banneret knight. He has two squires and two pages. This would require nine steeds, two war horses, three riding horses, one spare riding horse, two ponies, and one sumpter, basically a workhorse. Three household knights would accompany them with one squire each. Having been 12 steeds required, three chargers, six riding horses, and three other sumpters. Four servants would accompany them, a herald, a messenger, a cook, and an assistant cook. That requires six more horses, four riding horses, and two pack horses. The knight banneret's wife, with three maidservants and four pages, would require nine more horses, four palfreys, one spare palfrey, and four ponies. Then the wife's four servants would join them, two butlers, two grooms, six steeds would be required, four more riding horses, and two pack horses. Then there would be two children with one nurse, requiring three more horses, one palfrey, and two ponies. The total would be 30 people with 45 horses and ponies. Note that there are only four knights there. Compare this to the campaign setting of Spelljammer, which is a fantastic outer space environment as opposed to scientific. Essentially, ships are equipped with spell jamming helms. Ships powered by spell jamming helms are capable of flying into not only the sky, but into space. With their own fields of gravity and atmosphere, the ships have open decks and tend to not resemble the spaceships of science fiction, but instead look more like galleons, animals, birds, fish, or even more wildly fantastic shapes, allowing you to adventure in sword and sorcery within the cosmos. Now let's consider traveling through the blessed fields of Elysium where the river Oceanus runs through all of Elysium, and the world tree penetrates all four layers, introducing fantastic and godlike elements into the campaign. Let's go through an example together where we create a quick world and we introduce the concept of technology and the transportation technology used to travel between the two locations. Imagine two rural communities, both in shallow hills, and each year they trade produce, livestock, and other goods with each other. There are swampy fields filled with poisonous toads that act as an obstacle between the communities. How do they overcome this? Well, poor folk make stilts out of the available lumber. The wealthy are carried across the fields by Goliaths, who the toads ignore. Sometimes they load up livestock and produce in crates and carts that they keelboat across the swampy fields. When the water's shallow, they use logs to roll the rafts across the fields, but when the water's high, they try to float them across. They mark the paths with lanterns for safe travel by night, and also to create landmarks during the day. To make matters worse, there's dark elves or some other bogey that wear toad suits and lie on their backs in the fields and ambush travelers at night, and sometimes even in plain daylight. The dark elves, or the bogeys, tend to move the marker lanterns around, confusing the townsfolk. How do they reduce the amount of time it takes to go between the two communities? There's actually a teleportation circle in nearby Hag's Hollow, which is further north, but it'll take you directly across the toad fields. But this would involve negotiating with the hags. Simple questions about transportation enrich the world with details and provide possible adventure hooks. Some, some hooks from my above example could involve a simple search to recover lumber, or running the dark elves out of the swamp, or negotiating with a hag for passage quickly across to the other community. Now you try it. Name two settlements that the players will have to travel between. Name the obstacles the players must overcome between them. Start with one, but put as many as needed. How do these obstacles delay travel between these locations? What technology is used to transport goods and people through these obstacles? What additional technology could be introduced to reduce the amount of time it takes to travel between the two locations? So there you have it, that's this week's episode. You can see how the details around the transportation technology of your campaign setting can be used to provide adventure hooks and enrich your campaign setting. 
Next week, we're going to talk about magic and how it relates to your campaign world.